Okay, here I am at the KAU fields. Um, getting ready to start my march, flanking march. George Washington, I'm coming for you. Okay, this may actually be where the British camped the night before the Battle of the Brandywine. It's now the site of the Charles F. Patton Middle School, and evidently they are welcoming back the British. This is the walk up Unionville Road, Route 82. Unionville Village is down there. But the British came up here, of course waited their turn to get onto the roundabout, and then politely exited to the right. And it is a beautiful day, spectacular. The sky is amazing, mid 70s. You could not ask for a more beautiful day. I will be making a left turn onto Marlborough Road. We're starting to take a walk back in time here. Okay, so this is Marlborough Road. The intersection of Marlborough and Newhall Road. But these are the very roads. The very same roads that have been here for at least 238 years and well before that. There's a view the British would have had on their march 238 years ago. Coming up on a little hamlet, maybe, village here, still on Marlboro Road. And there's a cemetery here that looks quite old. And these are old, 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 old. What do we got here? The Civil War veterans here. Joseph Tyndall. Thank you for your service, Mr. Tyndall. Okay, so this is the intersection of Marlboro Road and Marlboro Spring Road. Marlboro Spring Road. Wow, there's an old house in there. Perhaps would have been here during the march. Still on Marlboro Springs Road. Heading towards Trimble's Ford, the first crossing point, but that's still a little ways off. Okay, I am entering Pocopson Township. Coming to the intersection of Red Lion Road and Northbrook. They're going to go on Red Lion up here to hit Trimble's Ford, up where the uh, Brandywine splits. Uh, beyond where the brand new one splits, of course. Red Lion Road is just a beautiful old road. See how this road has been carved in to the ground. A ditch dug out for many years of wagon wheels. I mean, I got... This side goes up, you know, like, what, 15 feet? That side goes up about seven or eight feet. Just an old road. Very quiet. You can see the roots of the trees. Isn't that cool?
And they provide a nice canopy of shade in here. And there's a rooster. Wow, look at that. Look how high up that goes. Okay, I'm coming up on the Pacopson Creek. And I'm going to cheat again and walk across the bridge. Although they would have had to go across this, the wagons and everything. I want to find out how they did that. You know, we think it's just the two parts of the brandy wine they had to ford, but there's other streams they had to go across. Wow, that is really cool. I'm going to take. where they got the brick from. That That's is. what that is. So it took them close to two years to do it. You know, just a couple guys working this, uh, house, outside, you know. The house is being rebuilt from ruins on Red Lion Road here. And it's got dual fireplace. Yeah, that's the way they heated um, it. Making the turn at Red Lion and Unionville Wawasset Road. I'm at the Brandywine Valley Association. Okay, so this farm, Whitehorn Farm, right across from the Brandywine Valley Association, is from 1733, so it's a witness farm. Coming up on the Brandywine Valley Association, Red Clay Association, and the Myrick Conservation Center. Awesome place to visit. And here we got a spring house here that looks like it is certainly a witness to the events of 238 years ago. Doesn't say much though. Likes to be quiet. All right. Coming up to the intersection of Bragg Hill and Mawasset Road. There are some hills on this walk. I can only imagine that what's it been now? I'm going to guess seven miles, but. These guys probably hated having to walk up these hills, and they're not even halfway there. We're coming, Georgie. Coming to Birmingham Hill. We even have a vineyard on the way. Okay, now this is Trimble's Ford Lane. But on the map, this just basically goes back to a, a home somebody built back there. It's not, uh, it doesn't take you to Trimble's Ford, so. And plus then they called it Trimble's Ford Lane and they closed it off to the public. So I'm not quite sure what the thinking is there. And Trimble's Ford is in the distance. The west bank of the, the west bank of the Brandywine is ahead. Okay, so this is a beautiful vista. And I'm gonna have to guess where Trimble's Ford is actually located from this point, but I believe it's in that direction there. Okay, well, I'm trying to find where Trimble's Ford is. I thought it was down there and it might be, but there's no easy way to cut through. When all else fails, follow the train tracks. Okay, well, I'm off the train tracks now. I made a left turn onto this trail. This doesn't look so foreboding, but I'm still on the lookout for patrols with muskets. Coming, Georgie. Hey, look, I found it. The Brandywine. And I believe Trimble's Ford is up here. But I'm close enough that I will 
take a dip anywhere I get the chance here. And this is beautiful. But I guess it's going to be sold off in the lots and developed. I guess that because there are signs saying that there are lots available to be sold off and developed. Oh, this is a pretty spot. And this is as good a place as any to get to the other side. There's even a fire pit here. I don't know if this is actually Trimble's Ford or not, but it sure looks nice, so I'm going in for a dip. Okay, I am fording the west branch of the Brandywine. I really am. And I'm up to my waist now. Going across. I'll tell you what, if I had muskets and gunpowder, this wouldn't be as much fun as it is. I have a backpack of electronic gear. All right, I think I'm gonna need both hands here pretty soon. This feels really good though, <laughs> I have to tell you. Oh man, does this feel good. Note to self, next time I do this, I'm not bringing anything I can't get wet so I can go for a swim. That would be the way to do this. There it is. I bet that's the pool right there. All right, so this is where I crossed. And if I'm not mistaken, Trimble's Ford. It was pretty close. There's the barn on. That's the road, what's it called, that I always take to Marshallton. And now I'm on the other side of Trimble's Ford. Which is up there on the left. That was a bit of an adventure. Where I just was, I believe, before crossing Trimble's, is where there was skirmishing. Or maybe it's now. I don't know. It could be now. I just know I feel danger in the air. We're coming, Georgie. We're coming, Georgie. I got all wet from fording the Brandywine, the West Branch, the, uh, the West Branch of the Brandywine at Trimble's Ford. And now, I've got something in my marching boot, otherwise known as a keen waterproof hiking sandal. Okay, we're at Camp Linden Road, where it ends now, but in 1777, Camp Linden Road continued through these fields to Lucky Hill Road. One thing to point out is that we're pretty close now to where the Continental Troops are guarding the, uh, the ford before, right where the Brandywine splits, right down that road, let's say maybe two miles. So they had to be very careful here. Now we've just come across Trimble's Ford. Okay, and th this whole area, there was skirmishing back in there, but in this whole area, we're fairly close to the Continental Troops. So here's where Camp Linden Road would have intersected into Lucky Hill Road. And now we'll walk on Lucky Hill Road towards Jeffrey's Ford. Lucky Hill Farm on Lucky Hill Road. A spectacular view back into the 18th century. Imagine these fields as the British marched over them on their way down Lucky Hill to the Brandywine. At this point the British might have been feeling a sense of excitement because they are marching towards the Continentals now, even though they still have to go across Jeffrey's Ford, the direction is towards the battle. They're heading downhill here, and they also have shade. Now look at how old this road is. As the British are finishing the walk here on Lucky Hill Road, intersecting into Allerton, there's a barn up ahead. And uh, they decide to go in and check it out. 
and they find a stash of booze in there, probably whiskey, that a merchant in Philadelphia had moved out to this barn for safekeeping when he felt it possible that the British would be occupying Philadelphia. He didn't want to lose his uh, whiskey. So he took it and put it in this barn and the British found it. And right about this time after marching yeah, a good 12, 13 miles, uh, they were very pleased and they took it and they drank it. So this is Allerton Road now. All right, so I'm at the Ford. And I'm not sure what side they had gone on, but... Let's take a look over here. Ooh, that looks nice. This works. All right. Try not to embarrass yourself here, Kitty. Here I am, fording the east branch of the Brandywine at Jeffrey's Ford. 238 years to the day and to the minute to when the British did it. Well, I'm just st still standing in the middle of the river. <laughs> just out standing in the creek. That doesn't look like it was there before. Although I don't know what that is. Yep, just out standing in the middle of the creek. The old fool. Those boys sure would have liked the feel of a nice water. And that hasn't changed. Has it? Probably just the way it looked. Although they say it was muddy, but this is pretty shallow here, so. Jeffries Ford. Cornwallis crossed here between 1 and 2 o'clock, September 11, 1777. And Kenny Lawson crossed here between 1 and 2 o'clock on September 11, 2015. Okay, so I'm walking up to Birmingham Road. Last leg of the walk of the flanking march. At this point, the British make a right turn and they are headed directly for George Washington's line, for the Continentals, who are redeploying at this point. It'll be about two o'clock right now. Birmingham Road. One of the more important roads in the formation of America, certainly in regards to the American Revolution. This is the road the British marched on, final leg of their flanking march to surprise George Washington after crossing the Brandywine River, west and east branches, above where he guarded it. Hmm. March has been about 12 miles to this point, maybe 13, about three more to go. See, there's all these little kind of streams they would have had to deal with too. Not just the Brandywine, but I mean, how do you get a how do you get cannons over this kind of stuff? Okay, I'm at Sconnell Town Road. And this, uh, this would be where the British had their infamous tea break. As I can now testify to, they would have needed a well-deserved break. Birmingham Road. Look at that. That's crazy. Okay, we're at the intersection of Birmingham and Lenape Road at Strode's Mill. 
This is where the British stopped to have their war planning session. And that would have occurred right at this time. 238 years ago, almost, to the minute. I'm at Strode's Mill, and I'm sitting down for the first time during this walk. But it sure feels good. My thighs are sore. That's about it, but they're very sore. All right, we're at the intersection of Birmingham and Lenape Road. A nod to my Lenape ancestor. Ancestors. Here you have, at this intersection, the confluence of Native America history and European continental American history. Yep, we do value our history. That is Radley Run Development, Osborne's Hill. And just to emphasize the historical content of this development, my favorite General Howe Drive. General Howe Drive. But General Howe rode a horse on this march. He wasn't dumb enough to walk it. All right, we're headed to Osborne's Hill, obviously. I'll tell you what, this stretch between uh, Allerton and to where we're gonna start to see the action, it's quite a long stretch. They still had a lot of marching to do. And I'll tell you, I know now they call this Osborne's Hill. It is in fact a hill and after you've walked over 13 miles walking up it, yeah, feels even more like a hill. Wow, there's a huge tree trunk there. A witness tree. All right, I'm gonna, all right, we've just climbed Osborne's Hill and we are at Osborne's Hill now. Right about the time that General Howe would have gotten here. From this ridge, General Howe directed the movements of the British Army at the Battle of the Brandywine, September 11, 1777. And I'll tell you, having just made the walk, this is absolutely the highest vista with the best views you're going to find anywhere on that walk. It's kind of weird at all. In, in contrast, it makes a lot, a lot more sense than just driving here and getting out and checking it out. Okay, so I met the owner of the property here, and he was a nice guy, Richard, good guy. And he was nice enough to let me come to the real top of Osborne's Hill, and wow. That is something. Look at how far you can see. That's amazing. And there's some ruins here where he says right near here is actually where General Howe set up his command post. So this is the real Osborne's Hill. Now that's looking back towards, well, you can see the criminal justice building in the distance there in Westchester, in that direction. So over there would be Marshallton. That's the way I came from. And here are the ruins. And the view would have been So this would have been where General Howe now you could have seen through there in those days because uh, those trees weren't there. This is really something. I think actually he said it was right here where this stone 
stone benches. So here we are, and this is the real Osborne's Hill. And we were fortunate to meet the owner, Richard, who was very nice to allow me to walk back there and take a look at it. Here's the Brandywine Battlefield sign. I wondered what happened to it. Now this is a pretty significant stream here they'd have to come across. We're just down from Osborne's Hill. So, I don't know what... So we're coming up the street road. Very dug out. I'm sure it was then too. So Street Road marks the perimeter of the Continental Line redeployed from the Fords. So the British would have been over there, that open field, or in this open field. You are at the center of the attack. So now we're on the continental side at this time of day, where they're battling the first wave of the British Hessians. And we are coming up on the Lafayette Cemetery and the Birmingham Meeting House. Birmingham Meeting House. That's the wall that the Continental Troops used to defend themselves against the oncoming British who had just marched this, the route that I just marched. And then, and then they started to fight. I guess, I'll tell you what, I, I could fight right now. What the heck? First line of defense of the American Army at the Battle of the Brandywine, 11 September 1777. Made it. That was a long walk. That was a long walk. Okay, I've walked down from the Birmingham Meeting House to Battle Hill. This is where the core battle was fought just about this time of the day, 238 years ago. Imagine as many as 30,000 soldiers, muskets and cannons and fighting at close quarters. It would be very smoky so they couldn't see very well. Conditions would have been very similar to today though. It's hot. I mean, it's in the 80s now. The Americans fought and reformed five times. They faced the British five times in a line, close quarters. You know, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes meant something. And then they would break and run for cover in the trees and then they'd reform and come out again to face the muskets and the cannons. Happened right here. And then the Americans had to head down 
to Sandy Hollow, which is where I'll go now, and we'll see where Lafayette was wounded. Man, that is one big darn cannon. They did not have cannons that big in the Revolution that were on the field anyway. The honor of having mingled my blood with that of many other American soldiers on the heights of the Brandywine has been to me a source of pride and delight. Extract from Lafayette, speech at Westchester, July 26, 1825. May the blood spilled by thousands, with equal merit in the cause of independence and freedom, be to ensuing generations an eternal pledge of unalloyed republicanism, federal union, public prosperity, and domestic happiness. Lafayette's Toast at Westchester, July 26, 1825. On rising ground, a short distance south of this spot, Lafayette was wounded at the Battle of the Brandywine. South of this spot. Okay, so... It's over there. That's what people have said, it's across the street there. Here we are on the bloody lane. Sandy Hollow Battlefield. Now we're talking about where the afternoon, the late afternoon, the early evening fighting commenced near where, we're near where Nathaniel Green made his rear guard defense to allow the troops to escape this direction in an orderly fashion so they wouldn't be destroyed. Delaware Town.